because it can get bumpy at times, so just ensure everybody's safety during this time. Make sure we have those hands, arms, feet, legs inside the truck while remaining seated. We do that, we're gonna have a great old time. Especially because above your heads, there is an animal spotting guide up there towards the roof of the truck. Basically, it's a checklist for you to use of some of the animals you may encounter while we're out there. We would usually don't see every single one. That would be an insanely lucky day. But we usually do still have some good luck. Let's hope that that luck continues as away we go into the reserve. Our first stop being the Little Aturi Forest. Keep your eyes peeled, because you don't really know what you're going to see in here, only because some of the animals are a little bit more inclined to be a little bit more reclusive, like to hide a little bit away. Some of these even have striped patterns that they use to blend into their surroundings even further. Like on your right hand side, there's an okapi over there. The okapi have those black and white stripes on their legs and on their backside. So initially everybody thinks black and white stripes, it must be a zebra. No. Okapi. Okapi. Okapi have the same stripes as a zebra, but they have no relation. They just use that stripe pattern to be able to blend into their surroundings. However, they are related to the giraffe. I know it's a little bit shorter, not probably what you were thinking, but based on skeletal structure and a couple other things, we do know that they are, in fact, distant cousins to the giraffe. brownish antelope that doesn't have any horns. The red kudu only have horns if they are males, so that one is definitely a female there. But the bongo have those horns no matter what. And you might notice how that they're a little bit different in size and shape and color. They both have those white vertical stripes on their sides. They use those stripes to blend into their surroundings just the same as the okapi. If they have a feeling that if they're being scared or being threatened anyway, they'll just jump down into the bushes and they can't see you if you don't move. And so the white stripes they poke out a little bit more vibrantly than another animal might just assume those white stripes are just sunbeams or sun rays radiating down through the trees. Now if we parked our way through these trees, we're going to be heading down to the Southview River, home of at least a pink backed pelican or two. But keep an eye out if you see anybody else swimming around out there. During mating season, the males will actually show off their pink backs from underneath those white feathers and be like, hey girl, you like pink, right? Right. right. They usually are mating pairs and they can sometimes do for a couple, a couple dozen to a couple hundred pairs. Now on the left hand side, I'm seeing some ripples in that water. Looks like those ripples belong to some Nile hippos up ahead. Ooh, looks like they might be snacking. Oh, look, look about the water. Nile hippos are very much in river dwellers. They hang out at the bottoms of rivers, and they only really need to take a breath every five to eight minutes. So a lot of their day to day is just spent at the bottom of those rivers, walking and running. Because they don't very swim very much because they have very heavy creatures, so instead they will just walk and run and push themselves off the bottom of the river floor. So they can float up to the surface to take those breaths before sinking back down. Hungry, hungry hippos. Sunbathing Nile crocodiles out there. Nile crocs, they're not the world's largest crocodile. 
crocodiles. They are still insanely large in my opinion because they can average anywhere from 16 to 18 feet long and weigh anywhere from 300 to 500 pounds each. Remember to keep your hands inside the chest. Good luck out here, especially using that animal spotting guide just as a backup, just in case. If there are any wilderness explorers out there, you might need to see some of these animals throughout your day. You can look at your badges. see a couple different species of animals migrating and grazing around. Let's hope they don't go anywhere too, too quickly so that way we may catch up with them as well. Now up here is just at first glance at the bottom of this hill. It's going to be on your right hand side. There's some very tiny little antelope with little white bellies and these tiny little horns on their heads. These are called springbok. The springbok are the smallest of the antelopes here on this reserve. However, even though they are tiny, they're in the top 10 fastest animals in the world. They can jump six feet in the air and 13 feet forward. And they can do it at the same time in like a really big bunny hop they call bronking. But that bronking can help them reach speeds of 55 to 60 miles an hour. And then on your right hand side, we just saw the smallest of the antelope on the reserve. That's the tallest one, the common eland. It's standing about six feet just there at the shoulder. And it looks like it's trying to use those spiral horns to actually pick up a branch, it looks like. I believe in them. I think they can do it. left-hand side there's a couple of African painted dogs out there oh, yes are. they are dogs uh, they're I know they're small they're cute they're fluffy and like the video says can I pet that dog can I pet that dog and just like the video says no you cannot they are adorable little creatures but they are some of the most successful hunters in all of Africa you don't want to they chase their prey down as a pack as a team and they chase them down until they just can't keep running and then it's dinner time for the dogs just the circle of life. The one we saw earlier was the male. We can tell that based on just muscle tone and just massive size compared to the two. Now, while this one here on the left is still very tall, still about six feet at the shoulders there, this one is a lot skinnier and leaner, so this one is definitely a female.
are just excited, but maybe don't scream at them. <laughs> I know we're all excited, especially when we see animals like a giraffe, things that we've seen on TV and in books for forever. But seeing one up close is very much a very rare sight. Especially one this close to us right here on the left-hand side. Now, they, it's hard to miss them. They've never known a short day in their life. They start off about six feet tall just when they're first born. And then they grow to be about 16 to 20 feet tall when they're fully grown. Sometimes those tree branches are a little too tall for them though. As you can see, they've picked the ends of them pretty clean. But they use that world's longest tongue right there to grab onto the rest of it and try to bring it down closer to their mouths. Makes snacking easier. Looks like there's a couple more of those giraffe hanging out right here too. <laughs> Sound like they're electrified. Yeah, it is. It is. Now this is where that game of peekaboo comes down. Because even though the vegetation is picking up a little bit, anything could be lurking just right here in these tree lines. So make sure it a very fun game to play. naturally starts drifting to the left hand side on these hills here because usually there is some larger animal movement over there especially on the tops of those tree lines where they like to try and camouflage a little bit or probably just try to get out of the sun as much as they can <laughs> migration to Orlando, Florida, and they go to food and wine festival at Epcot. <laughs> Activity just on the peak of this Kofi 
a sleep, which honestly, if it's what I think it is, I think we want it to be a sleep. Because I think on the left hand side, I think that is an African lion sleeping just on the edge of it. You can see the tufts of the yellow plumes of his mane and his little feet, little toes, little toes. But that is in fact an African lion out there. Now they are nocturnal creatures, they do sleep all day, sometimes even more or less than 18 hours a day. And that's a cat nap I wish I could take. When they are fully awake in the very early hours of the morning, when it's still completely dark out, they're going to wake up completely and do most of their activity before the male that's pretty much just staying home and protecting the house and his pride of lions his family, especially if there's any cubs lurking around, while she, the lioness, and the other females, they're going to go out and do all the hunting and bring home food together so they can eat together as a family and go right back to bed and do it all again the next day. Oh, big yawn. Big yawn. Hey, Belly. <laughs> He's like, what you doing in my yard? Help out those 
there are other ways, especially if you, if you already are going to those merchandise locations. Sometimes those blanket stuffed animals and things that you're already buying anyway, look at the tags that they have before you purchase them. Because sometimes the tag says Disney Conservation on it or some other conservation fund is like savetheelements.org and things like that. Yeah. You know that the money you're spending is also going to those conservation funds. A lot of things around here will tell you about reducing, reusing, recycling, things like that. Things that we've heard since the golden age. But it is true. And we do need more than just papers and plastics. We also talk about some other things that are necessities like, you know, electronics. A lot of electronics these days are made with a mineral in them called the coltan. Coltan is mined in the savannas of Africa. And unfortunately that mining is taking away the homes of a lot of animals like the African elephant. Now the best thing you do is when you get a big time collar and you can break through the laptop with a spilled coffee on it or anything, instead of just throwing it out, turn it in, replace it, recycle it. That way they can go in and harness that coal tan and they can reuse it to make another electronics or something that day. Hopefully to reduce that mining and hopefully one day eradicate that mining altogether so they won't have to do it anymore. It's all the baby steps that we can do as a group to help out these animals and help ourselves feel really nice. Now here in Harambe, we do not like to say goodbye, because goodbye is too sad and too final. And while it might be the end of your adventure today, we hope that you guys will come back, because no two smarts are ever the same, and we hope that you guys come back and visit us the next time you make your way back to Harambe. So instead of goodbye, we like to say kwaharini. Kwaharini is a phrase that translates to mean go well, as in go well until our paths cross again kind of thing. Kwaharini, like go well, see you next time. And hopefully we do see you that next time. So kwaharini, my friends, go well, go wild, go have fun out there. Wherever the rest of your night may take you in any adventures that you may have planned in the future. The doors on your right will reopen in a moment, so watch your hands on our feet nice inside the truck until they do so. 